Hello, welcome back to MCFC Connect. Today we're talking about a topic that I've been very like dead set on for a while now. Um, but today we're talking about Joao Cancelo and whether he can come back to City. Um, and I'll get on to why I'm even talking about this to begin with in a minute. But look, you know my standpoint. My standpoint has always been, um, you know, if you bring bad, bad atmosphere to the dressing room, you think you, if you think you're bigger than the club, then there's no place for you on this team, really. And so, you know, there is no place for you if you're just going to drag everyone down um, mentally. And, you know, it's just not it's just not nice on the rest of the players. And we want a good dressing room. It's, it's a big part of winning titles, winning trophies. So it's absolutely crucial that the dressing room is um, is bang on, to be honest. So, But, yeah, that is what we're here to talk about. And the reason why is because, well, of him returning back to training. There is the photo there. It was also in the thumbnail. Um, but... He was. He's been in training for Sissy for at least the first session back. There he is now, and he's by no means smiling like everyone else. But maybe, maybe he's just trying to look cool for the camera. Um, but it's interesting to see him back in training, and considering he wasn't here during the entirety of preseason, although that was partly probably because I'm pretty sure he went to the Euros. So. Um, that is the big thing here. Now then, Joao Cancelo's transfer case has been quiet all summer. Last summer, I'm pretty sure it did take a while as well for Joao to get off. But we at least knew something was going on. It was pretty certain that Joao was going to be going to Barcelona last summer. Um, it was floating around. But Barcelona, this summer, either can't afford him or can't or just not interested in him. I'm pretty sure they are interested in him, um, but there's been nothing in terms of um, trying to bring Joao Cancelo back to Barcelona this summer. There's been absolutely nothing. And so that's why I speak about a p possibility of whether he can, whether he can actually return to the squad. Because, like, Joao Cancelo, he's going to be training if we decide to keep him then he's going to be training and doing nothing if we don't allow him fully back into the side. Now then, the only way he gets back into the team is if him and Pep, and if he's got any problems with anyone else, if they clear up that entire situation and they wipe that under the rug. That is the only way um, this this even happens, if this even gets entertained. Now then, pretty sure conversations were had last summer, before last season, and um, I'm pretty sure that um, they weren't the best talks. I'm pretty sure they ended not heated, but just not well. Um, not in the greatest way ever. So that is the um, that was the situation last summer. And I'm, pre I'm pretty sure we all thought he was going to leave. City were trying to look for a fee for him. Uh, Barcelona they could only get in a, um, a, a loan deal, not even with an option to buy. This summer they've just signed Danny Olmo for about £60 million. Um, ish, so you know that could be the whole transfer fund. For all we know, we know Barcelona's budget isn't exactly um, plentiful. But here, I'm going to talk about something. Um, let's say Joao Cancelo. Let's say it does get wiped under the rug. Now, then it will then go into public domains. I know a lot of City fans aren't happy with him. I'm not happy with him. The whole thing two years ago, or whenever it was, should never have happened. And uh, actually, no, not even two years ago, a year and a half. Um, it should never have happened. Um, it was a silly thing. that they wasn't happy with the player that actually stood right in front of him, basically. Rico Lewis. I uh, kneeled right in front of him. Um, Rico Lewis was getting game time over him. Rico Lewis got a lot of play time that was probably unexpected last season. Um, no, in the treble season for City. You know, a lot of people probably didn't expect him to get a lot of the game time that he did, but he ended up being really helpful at times for City. Helped us discover a, another way of playing, which was um, the inverted fullbacks drifting into midfield. He was a real big um, player in helping us get into that because it's what he'd been trained to do and Pep really could get into his head. But it doesn't look like Joao Cancelo was able to get his head around it because, well, he didn't play um, during that time. That's the whole reason he didn't play. 
But Joao Cancelo, he wasn't happy. Um, something went down on a, on the training um, the training pitch for Sissy. Um, apparently, it's not necessarily confirmed, but you know, a load of rumours and all that. Uh, something went down. Gundogan and I think Diaz had to calm him down. I think Foden maybe as well. I can't quite remember. Something went down between him and Pep. And it ended with him going off to Barcelona on deadline day. Um, came back in the summer and eventually dipped off to Barca. We had nothing this summer there. And so I want to speak about the potential case of if Juan Cancelo does stay. And if he does get integrated back into the team. Now then, a concern I've had this summer, I wanted like I wanted to see three signings from City this summer. One of them we got, which was um, Savinia, going into the summer, by the way. I wanted a Rodri backup, and I wanted something to back up Kyle Walker. I'm not looking for Frimpong or anything like that, although Frimpong, very nice pick. Not necessarily Frimpong, just something to give Kyle Walker a bit of backup. Kyle Walker's 34, pretty sure he's the oldest in the squad, bar, um, Scott Carson. And... He's his the one thing that he's great at Kyle Walker is his pace. The moment those legs go on Kyle Walker and he can't do that with those runs anymore, Kyle Walker suddenly becomes not redundant, but his main utility is gone. You know, Kyle Walker even said in an interview um a while ago, like a year or so ago, you know, he said like he thinks all the boys in the city squad have got some sort of superpower, essentially. Phil Foden, I'm pretty sure he said, like, he's dribbling and going in between the lines, KDB, uh, his vision to see a pass, and Rodri just, his passing on a hold. And he said his superpower is pace, okay? If he loses his pace, he suddenly lost his superpower, and he's lost what makes him, what makes him so super in this team when we need him. That person that's always been known to be able to lock down Vinny Jr. and even Kylian Mbappe, at times, um, suddenly gone. That that power he once had, nothing more. And then you've got Joao Cancelo by the way. There's no means Kyle Walker levels of pace, but he is pretty pacey, and he does offer, I feel, a bit more on the attack. I've always been very iffy with Kyle Walker going on the attack. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And But with Joao Cancelo, now it doesn't work every time, but it does work a fair bit. Now, Joao Cancelo on defence is another story. But to have the option of Joao Cancelo is what I'm saying isn't that bad. It's not like he's got many options currently if Barcelona can't get him. It doesn't look like anyone else is after him. Apologies for the rain. I am sorry. Um, but let's let's quickly go into Joao Cancelo's stats. In the... In the one, two, three... Three and a half seasons he played at City... Um, he played 154 games. Um, since the 2021 season, he had four four injuries and uh, missed 17 matches. Not too bad, and that's including Barcelona time, by the way, and it's Bayern Munich time. That includes that. Um, and. So, yeah, with Sissi, he played 154 matches, and he got 30 GNA in that time. That's a goal contribution every five games, which isn't that bad for a right-back, or a full-back even. Um, it's not that bad at all, in fairness. Now, he did get two red cards and 27 yellow cards, which definitely could be better. And even if we were to sound this summer, his value has plummeted. Two seasons ago, I think, you know, the, the whole game with Aston Villa that season... Trial's um, transfer value was 70. Pretty sure when he left six, is it City, it was 60. When he joined Barcelona, I think it was like 50 or 45. And now he's come back to City and it's about 25. So we're not getting much room either way. In fact, we're getting about what Barcelona's um, buy clause was apparently meant to be last summer. And um, when they were into um, get a loan deal of an option to buy, but then they had to scrap that idea. Um, and look, onto his transfer likeliness, I highly doubt we're actually going to see Joao Cancelo leave this summer. I'm really doubtful. Anything can happen, especially towards deadline day. 
you know, on deadline day, and loads happens. It's always, it's always the day that you just see everything pop off um, in the transfer window. So that is um, that's my viewpoint on deadline day. And literally, deals can get started on deadline day, and they can get finished. That's how quickly it can go. And that and that just shows how quickly Joao can go, just like that. But I'm getting worried with Joao. It really doesn't look like he's going at the moment. And he's back in training with City. Does that mean him and Pep have made up? Not necessarily, because he also played in pre-season last season. And look how that turned out. He was out the door anyway um, in August. So there's there is a lot in the air right now. But on the possibility that he does stay, can he be a utility to City? Now, something I was firm on um, last season was how I wanted Joao to leave. But something I was also firm on was... I thought he was going to do really well at Barca. I think he did all right, um, but I was really, I was always said that Juan Cancelo is a great player and with a lot of quality. But I also said that just because of that, it doesn't mean that he can. It doesn't mean he can instantly stay because he still um, can be a pain um, in terms of dressing room. That is the reality of it. Um, but that really covers what I've got to say about, you know, all my stats there. Well, there, in reality. Um, but do I think he'll stay? I don't think he should, personally. I've always been a, I've always been the guy that um, has been saying, Sal Trial doesn't deserve to stay, not after, not after everything that went down. Um, I've always been that guy. I'm not the only guy. I'm not, I'm not, um... I'm not alone on that. I think it's probably the vast majority of City fans that want him gone. Uh, I assume some of City fans would like to give him a second chance. That doesn't surprise me. Um, football is full of opinions, and not, some of them aren't always right, some of them aren't always wrong. But I think this is an area that is semi up for debate because I can read both aspects of it, but I only agree with one. What do you think? Do you think Joao Cancelo is going to leave in the summer? Or can Cancelo come back to Man City? It's an interesting one. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I will see you all in the next one.